Feel free to pause the video, take a moment to reread the problem if that would help you out. In this problem, we have a current of 17 milliamps that is maintained in a single circular loop with a circumference of 2 meters. A magnetic field of 0.8 tesla is directed parallel to the plane of the loop. We need to find the magnitude of the torque exerted by the magnetic field on the loop. And in chapter 19, we have learned that when you have a magnetic field applied to a current carrying loop, then a torque could develop on the loop, causing it to spin around. And that torque is calculated according to this expression given here. Now there's a lot of information packed into that expression, so let's break it down. We begin with B, which is going to be the magnitude of the magnetic field. Now that was given in the problem to be 0.8 Tesla. So we know that information so far. We also have the current that is flowing through the loop. That would be represented by the letter I. And that was given in the problem as well. That was 17 milliamps. Now if you have current in milliamps, you're going to need to convert it into the standard unit of amps. And to do that, you just multiply by 10 to the minus 3. And that's because 1 milliamp is 10 to the minus 3 amps. So that would be the standard unit right there. Next, we have A, which represents the cross-sectional area of the loop. So if you look at this fantastic picture, the area that we need would be the circular area right here. Now, we probably know that to find the area of a circle, we would employ the equation pi times the radius squared. And unfortunately, they didn't give us the radius directly. They gave us the circumference. We know the circumference is 2 meters. So we have to do a little bit of work, and so let's recall that the circumference of a circle would equal 2 pi multiplied by its radius. We want to solve this for the radius because we need the radius to calculate the area. So we're going to go ahead to solve for radius and divide both sides of this equation by 2 pi. So these 2 pi's on the right hand side cancel. We can now see that the circumference divided by 2 pi is going to equal the radius. We're going to plug that expression in for the radius in our area equation. Afterward, we can actually plug the value of the circumference in. The question noted that the circumference was 2 meters. So we're going to plug in 2 meters right there for the circumference. And then it's convenient that it's 2 meters in this case because these 2's would actually cancel out. So now you're left with 1 over pi. So we want to simplify this. We have the area is equal to pi, and that's being multiplied by 1 over pi, and that quantity is squared. So we continue to kind of simplify this. When you square the 1 over pi, you're going to get 1 over pi squared, but then we have a factor of pi that can cancel. So 1 cancels here, 1 factor cancels in the denominator. We can see that the area is 1 over pi, and that's going to be meters squared. So now we have the area. And we move along in the equation, we encounter n. Right there in the equation is n. n is simply the number of loops in the situation described. Now, if you go back and read this, it says that we have a single circular loop. So in that case, n would just equal 1. And then finally, we need an angle of sorts. And that's where this picture could come in handy. Whenever you're plugging an angle into this torque equation, you want to make sure that you're describing or determining the angle between the magnetic field shown here and then an imaginary line that runs right through the center of the loop. So that's this imaginary line in case you were wondering what that was. We know that the magnetic field is pointing in this direction because the question said that the magnetic field is directed parallel to the plane of the loop. So this vector here would be parallel to the plane of the loop. We have that imaginary line running through the center of the loop. So ask yourself, what would the angle between the magnetic field and that imaginary line be? And hopefully you can see that the angle would simply be 90 degrees. And so now we're ready. We can plug in all of the given information, all of the listed information, and we're going to go ahead and do that and calculate the torque acting on this current carrying loop. So there we have the numbers plugged in. Make sure your calculator is set to the degree mode. And when you calculate this torque, you're going to end up with 0 0.00433. And then the standard unit of torque is a newton multiplied by a meter. Now, if your homework system requires you to convert this into a milli value, then what we're going to do is we're going to use a conversion. So we could say, let's see here, I suppose we could say one milli newton meter is 10 to the minus three newton meter. 
So this may be unlikely in your case. Your homework system might not require you to do this, but just in case, when you do that, you're going to get 4.33. That would be millinewton meter. So either this version of the answer would be correct or this version of the answer would be correct for the torque applied on that circular loop.